Welcome to It Takes Two. I'm Blair. I'm Chris. And today we'll be talking about Married at First Sight, Season 18, Episode 4. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, comment. Someone losing their voice, but we go press through. You ready, Blair? I'm ready. Let's go. So we are starting with Alan and Madison. They have breakfast in bed. He is excited about the day to day and just how they'll be getting along. Mm -hmm. They're going to meet each other's families today. She just wants to know what to anticipate about him. Her last relationship was three years ago. His was a year and a half ago. Towards the end, he realized it was an unhealthy relationship, but he went through therapy and he the therapist helped him work through the breakup. Okay. He did live with his ex and they lived together for about one and a half years. I think he said they were together for all about four years, Mm -hmm. but she has never lived with a partner. Mm. Um, He also shares that he doesn't get dressed if he's not going anywhere. So you'll probably see him in the shirts and and the boxers that he has on right now in this team. (laughs) Listen, he better than me working from home. As, as he said, Mm -hmm. he said, Hey, if, if I ain't got to listen, I ain't going to make no dirty laundry just to make dirty laundry. Right. You get what I'm saying? (laughs) Let's keep going because I'm sure there's a lot more about them, but I want to get to that part. Okay. Well, moving on, we've got Carla and Juan. Mm -hmm. They did a lot of cuddling last night. Okay. He served her coffee. And once he sits down, she asked him to stir it for her stop right there mm-hmm. she made him call he made her coffee i'm good with that yeah you know what servitude that's what relationships is all about but stir it for me <laughs> what i think that carla is starting to establish what she wants out of this relationship dominance and i think she's going to push it further and further and further mm-hmm. until she ultimately gets what she wants which is to be a stay-at-home wife <laughs> mm-hmm so she talks about how she uh, they're talking about things that they usually drink during the week. And he says he's big on juicing. Yeah. And she says she is, too. But she goes out and buys her juice. And he's like, that's expensive. Yeah. Those things are like ten dollars a pop. And then in the confessional, she says mm, we're like 13. Mm. Um, she says that money is energy. So it just comes and goes. It's no big deal to her. He says that when they do live together, he can go ahead and make her juice for her so she can save some money. That's that's not what she's trying to do. Mm. Right. Um, the problem isn't so much of um, you need someone to make the juice because juicing carrots is not hard. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? You just blend the carrots, stuff like that, juice it. You get what I'm saying? But it's the it's the intention behind what she wants. She wants to be able to go and have someone do it for her. Right. Do you get what I'm saying? Because $13 a day, she says she gets it every day, $13 a day. A month, a year, it makes no sense to him. And especially since, especially in the field that he's in, he's creating an app. Yeah. More times than not, it's not going to work. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? His money is in the app. He's going to lose money creating an app. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? And she's over here talking about some stir my coffee for me. He already <laughs> made it. Yeah. Like she's already trying to establish a dominance over him. To basically like, I am your princess. You like supposed to serve me. I am your queen. And it's not going to work. And to her thing about, what did I tell you? Uh, Money is energy. Mm -hmm. Well, it seemed like you got low energy. Okay. Because I, I don't see it for her. I don't see it for her. Next, we got Camille and Thomas. He was thinking about worst case scenarios last night. Mm -hmm. Um, But honestly, they seem to be a really good fit and they are very comfortable together. Yeah. The oldest guy she dated was 41, but she does like older guys. Yeah. Uh, She used to or usually would date older because the odds are higher that they would be more mature Mm -hmm. and that they would know what they want out of life potentially and the confessional thomas talks about the 10-year age gap and how that was a bit of a concern for him he does want to have a family soon but he is enjoying learning more about her i think at this point he's a little bit concerned that maybe she would want to wait to have a family do you have any thoughts about them specifically um not really they seem to be getting along fine um and before when i said camille I didn't know if she liked him necessarily. Mm-hmm. Um, I think she does. I think that's just her personality. The more that we saw them uh, interact with each other's friends and family yeah. and the way that she said, yeah, you know, my sister would kind of describe me as reserved as well. I think they're both just kind of chill, reserved people. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think when it comes to the the big age gap between them, um, I think that may be a problem. You get what I'm saying? Especially when it comes to children. If she wants to wait, I don't know how much Thomas is is willing to be patient. You get what I'm saying? But we will see. Right now, I have nothing against them. 
we've got Michelle and David. Uh oh. So we see David. He apparently got up early and is just coming back from the gym. Mm-hmm. She did not sleep well. She tossed and turned, and his work alarm went off at 4:45 a.m. And then he talks about how he has a second shift that he does for his second job, and that alarm is set as well. Mm-hmm. But he's going to try to turn the alarms off. Yeah. Uh, they talk about when will they actually have time to be together, and they say probably like early in the morning, mm-hmm. and they'll have to communicate over the phone throughout the day. He did request a new shift to be off work at a more decent hour. Mm-hmm. She asked him, is it hard to date living at home? She does not find that attractive. Mm-hmm. And she hopes that's not his long term plan. Oh, my goodness. He tells her again that he could move out. He's just choosing to stay at home because he can save money that way. He's cool with it. He's happy. And in a way, it's like his own apartment. He has a kitchen, his own bathroom, his Mm -hmm. own entrance. So it's not a big deal to him. But he does appreciate her honesty and he understands her concerns. She just doesn't know him yet. What are your thoughts on them, Blair? Uh, Michelle's not going to let this thing go. Mm. This thing is literally eating away at all of her thoughts to Mm -hmm. the point I figured that that's why she was tossing and turning at night because mm-hmm. she was like, I can't believe this man lives at home. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Michelle, honestly, it might be too early to tap out, but you might need to, I don't think you're going to be able to get over this. Listen, can you imagine she's trying to rest and she's like, he's, he's at home with his mama. He's at home with his mama. <laughs> <laughs> We're waking up in a cold sweat. Right. No, she needs to grow up now. Like, cause it, and it's funny because, how much of a, and I don't want to use the word villain, but Michelle's coming off as a villain, at least in this episode to me. Mm. How much of a villain do you have to be for us to already be on your side, right? And then we kind of like support the other person. Yeah. I am not a fan of David. Mm. I am not a fan of David living at home with his mom, especially if he doesn't have to. You get what I'm saying? But she was pressing it so much. This ain't the only time Blair go read those notes about M- Michelle bringing it up. This is just the first time of many, right? Of uh, she bringing it up and using it as a kind of like a a a a like a a flaw in him. Yeah, like it's kind of weird, right? Listen, you just totally don't care about the cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I find that very funny. But it's almost as if it's like you are basically forfeiting the whole experience because of this yeah and and i'm like you're cheating yourself but it is what it is this ain't the only time we go talk about it i'm gonna have more to say me too we get to mm and ikechi mm. they are super hype about being husband and wife mm-hmm. apparently she slept in um he slept in a little bit more than he used to mm-hmm. is used to but not as long as her yeah he talks about how he usually gets up and goes to the gym and how the gym is his coffee yeah his worry was what if he wasn't enough for her as far as before they got to the altar Mm -hmm. and she didn't know if he would be attracted to her Mm. he likes when their skin touched at one point during the night but they say that they didn't do anything and she says well we connected we had a moment we touched and that and that means something yeah i don't know if this is the scene but there was a part of when they was in the bed um where he was like he's not really a morning person basically don't talk to me in the morning and Uh things like that and i'm like he don't like her Oh. Right. He he is and it's funny because the preview for next week confirmed what I already thought. See, I didn't even catch I didn't even write that as a note because I didn't think that no, was no, no, noteworthy. No. Listen, if uh. if I'm really attracted to you, right, um, I'm not gonna lead with my don'ts. Mm. You get what I'm saying? And you could kind of hear her insecurity, or not even insecurity, because I don't want to say insecurity. I don't want to put that on her, but what she's been through. Yeah. Right. She says, I was worried if you if you was going to find me attractive. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That means her past is talking, in my opinion. Um, and I think she I think as we saw a preview and if you didn't see the preview, definitely catch our after show. Um, he's going to friend zone this girl yeah. because the marriage is not about her. The mm-hmm. marriage is about him being on the show. He followed the show literally domestically yes. <laughs> to be on the show. So I think what he's going to try to do or what we're going to see, at least from this point, he go put on a nice face. He go be basically a nice guy, basically try to be likable for the camera. But he has no interest in her. He just got to be nice to her so he can get a good edit for us. So so we can be interested. So we can be interested in him. But we can read him. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, like I, I don't think he realized how obvious he's coming off. As like, you're not really for her. You're for whatever you're for, you know? And I would say that 
when they were talking about their fears or concerns before mm-hmm. going down the aisle and he said his worry was that you know if he might not be enough for her for some reason i didn't believe him mm. <laughs> and i think it's because um when they actually i don't know if it was the after party or when he was talking to no it, i think it was the after party where he said he had a signal for his friends to come get him yeah, 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 yeah. um if if she wasn't what he expected her to be mm-hmm. i have a hard time believing he thinks that he's not good enough for people i think he thinks that people aren't good enough for him 100 percent. so i i was just like this sounds like a pandering kind of answer because mm-hmm. i don't even know if you think that way for real it's special so. <laughs> you 100 percent right because you're going to read scenes later mm-hmm. that he basically be looking for a unicorn yeah you get what i'm saying listen here make sure y'all tap in with us on our after show we are reviewing the show and the after show okay let's keep going now we get back to madison and alan uh they meet each other's family mm-hmm. alan shares that he does want kids in a couple of years and the dad says well before y'all get intimate y'all need to get tested wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> and he hasn't been sexually active for a while he mm-hmm. was only with one person but he said he did get tested three weeks ago yeah. and i was like okay she's still gonna need to see that paperwork mm. thank you dad mm-hmm. <laughs> madison has come into this wholeheartedly wanting a commitment mm-hmm. she has had a hard time finding people who wanted to commit uh, to long-term relationships yeah alan asked would he have a chance with her if he just was walking down the street and sis was like nah wow she said, pretty boy is her type, mm-hmm. but your personality did win us over. Uh, she just needs someone who is willing to commit at this point. Like, okay. Pretty much. My sister's ready to get married. She stopped wanting to stop playing games. So she she wants a pretty boy, but she might get what she can get. Yeah. Mom says that um, when it comes to Alan, you need to support him, love him, relax him. And she starts crying and just says that, you know, Madison, she's just so wonderful. And mom um, tells him that we really need a successful, good marriage. Yeah. I think mom was making it about herself. She was. (laughs) She was. She loves that um, uh, when it comes to Alan and how they describe him that, you know, he comes across as very supportive um, and the family comes across as supportive, but Mm -hmm. she doesn't want to break his family's heart. Mm -hmm. She tells him that, you know, to be real, she has a lot to still learn about him and they need to learn about each other and just to see if they really are compatible. I go first. Uh, yeah. Madison is her name, right? Yes. Madison's family was rude to him. Mm. Very rude to him. Um, bringing up test results, like, who are you? You get what I'm saying? As well as stop bringing up this pretty boy thing about you not her type or whatever. Well, yes. But at the end of the day, because she keeps saying it. Well, she's telling him and he's just basically like basically, you should know then and, but my whole thing <laughs> is pretty boys don't want you, Madison, or else you'd be with a pretty boy right now. Well, you get what I'm saying? Like, pretty boys don't want you. So this whole idea that everybody keeps telling this grown man that you are not her type, <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Those are seeds being planted, right? Because I personally don't think she like them. Mm. That's that just me. Maybe they're just confirming my bias. Yeah. But my whole point is you said something to me while we was watching the show. You said to actually have a preference and to come on the show is like it's an oxymoron. It, it, is. Make, it makes no sense. When you decide to come on the show, that's you basically saying I am forfeiting and I'm abandoning my preferences. I may have little preferences as in like I want black, white, maybe something like that. Or if you want to be at details, Michelle, a light skinned black guy, we go get to you in a minute. Right. But the whole point is you don't say this is what I'm really into. I'm really into pretty boys. No, you gave up that right when you signed up to be on the show. True. So like that's why I'm like for her sister to keep saying it, basically putting those doubts in his head. Like, you know, I don't know if you really into me. And we're going to see that at the end of the show where he's basically like hesitant to even hold her hand to even like basically be like, I don't really feel like comfortable that like you're into me. I'm into you. That's why I'm kind of like, I don't know what to do. Yeah, because those are things that have been confirmed and confirmed for episodes and episodes that she may not really be into you. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I felt like the dad was overstepping his boundaries For about sure. the STD topic. Uh, talk to your daughter about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then when it comes to Madison, I did appreciate that she was real with his family as far mm-hmm. as we still got to get to know each other. But I just hate when people come onto the show and they don't realize they're married. Like Madison is saying, we need to see if we're compatible. Does it matter at this point? No, it don't. <laughs> You're married. If mm-hmm. you value marriage in the way that you want to be married and committed to somebody long term Mm -hmm. people think that the eight week mark is the ending like no you are actually preparing for a lifelong relationship so you need to get to know him Mm -hmm. so y'all can learn how to be compatible yeah (laughs) so that's the only thing 
Next, we get Emim and Ikechi, who meet each other's friends and families. Ikechi said getting married has been a desire of his. He was engaged 12 years ago, mm-hmm. but he uh, has sabotaged multiple relationships. Ha- Tell me how, Ikechi. Mm-hmm. Don't don't speak so vaguely about it. Exactly. You get what I'm saying? Keep going. He said being 25, not knowing yourself, it was a growth process mm-hmm. that he wasn't ready for and he hurt someone. Mm-hmm. It was a mutual decision not to be married, but it was still hard for him. He stopped himself from getting too far with other people that he dated in the past. Okay. Ikechi says that he's learned to listen to people when they tell him things pretty much. If she says she's crazy, you better believe she's crazy. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have the energy to waste on nonsense. Let's keep going. He has met good people, just not people who are good for him. Mm-hmm. So with his family, um, he they tell M.M. that he is a poet. He's kind of well known on social media. The ladies love him. How are you going to stay secure? Start right there. Mm-hmm. Why are you on the show then? Yeah. Okay. Excuse me, Blair. We got a little <laughs> mini celebrity on the show now. <laughs> like, like what? Like, don't put that burden on the other person that you're meeting this is rude too but yeah. by the way right so it catches a big deal how are you gonna deal with it yeah. right basically making it seem like how are you gonna basically be in his shadow because he is a poet i haven't heard him say a poem yet mm-hmm. i heard madison say a poem before i heard him say a poem and that was when they was outside the freaking uh resort yeah. right um he's also known on social media i don't know who he is yeah. <laughs> right and the ladies love him. The ladies love him so much that he have to be on the show. Yeah. Come on now. Like, 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 stop it. Don't. And that's what I'm saying. What they're doing is passive aggressively dimming her light. Mm-hmm. Basically, how can you fit in his world and things like that? Besides both people coming together, abandoning their own preferences to like your point to basically make a new world. And Amem got motion on her own. Like, she really does. That's what so I'm saying. Like, 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 you over here talking about him being a poet. Miss Ma'am is a whole MP with her own practice. Come like, on please, now. Please don't snoot your nose up at that. Exactly. Come on. Come Come on. on. That's what I'm about. I'm about to crash out. <laughs> okay. I mean, if, if I had to look at the couple of who was the successful one, I'd say Amem, but who am I? But no, it, mm-hmm. it's not. It's not no, I'll say it is Amem, <laughs> right? It is Amem. Yeah. Because at the end of, and that's what I'm saying. Like, y'all about to make me go on a rant, right? That's why I understand. <laughs> understand why y'all women be saying what y'all be saying about this piss in the pool and there's feces in the pool and a dead body floating in there yeah. because how how dare you exactly with, with this woman who accomplished what she accomplished right at her young age gonna tell her she's to the point where she's like i've done everything i was supposed to do career-wise i guess i just get married you yeah. know what i'm saying how are you gonna say how are you gonna fit into his poet life social media life and fit into the ladies love him I'm his wife. Like, exactly. like, like, like what that mean to me? <laughs> keep going, please, because I got somewhere to be in less than 30 minutes, okay? <laughs> MM says that he's going to make sure that I'm secure, and as long as he makes me feel comfortable, that's all that matters. Um, it's not up to her to feel secure. He's going to have to do the work to make yeah. her feel that way. She asked, why is he still single? C- come on now. I mean, if you got all these accolades. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um Apparently, the auntie or family member says that he's looking for a unicorn, maybe looking for perfection, but, you know, perfection doesn't really exist. Mm-hmm. It's about choosing someone and you guys choose each other every day. Yeah. So Mem's family says, OK, so you went through married at first sight a couple mm-hmm. of times. Are you ready for marriage or is this just an opportunity? Ikechi says not to shade your question. No, it is shade. <laughs> mm-hmm. But this is not light this is a lot of work when it comes to marrying at first sight and he says as a black man looking to the black man across the table like you know have my back Mm -hmm. he said as a black man it's not easy for us to be vulnerable him wanting to do this and to say that we want to be in love and want to be married is um you know he wants to show that in this day and age that black people can do this or something along those lines what did that got to do with my question that 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 did not answer my question (laughs) not at all no what is a lot of work is moving from city to city following the show i'm sure that's a lot of work yeah right let's keep going because i'm gonna have more of them later on listen i'm just warming up guys we got michelle and david yes david's mom comes with a list of questions yeah she was shocked uh 
Michelle was sho- shocked by his smoking and the fact that he was living at home. Emphasis on living at home. And mom says, you know, he just wanted to get that off his chest. Uh, it is his own apartment. Mm-hmm. He's an independent person. But mom's biggest fear is him getting hurt because he is going in, jumping in 100%. And I do feel like he's going jumping in 100% because if you volunteered that I smoke cigarettes, you are in 100%. Exactly. You actually let me know that I'm not 100% if you sharing that you smoke cigarettes. Because he really didn't have to share. Just he stop did not, smoking them. He, 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 <laughs> he really did not have to share any of that. Mm-hmm. So the fact that he was willing to just get things off his chest and it kind of felt like enough, I was like, you know what? David do come off it that he is 100% into it. I give him respect on that. Yeah, Michelle feels like she, like he is fully in, but she has a couple of hesitations. And the sis looked like she wanted to smack her across the face. Mm-hmm. The sister was like, are you not 100% in? Come on, sis. And Michelle says that she feels overwhelmed. He is still a stranger. Yeah. She's happy with what she's seen so far, but it's just information overload right now. Mm-hmm. But um, she does... Confirm with him that her intentions are pure. Okay. David talking to her family says that he can tell that she was overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. So he wants to show her that he can be the husband for her. And her sister tells him that patience is key when it comes to her, to her. Mm -hmm. Um, They're very independent women. And she's also somebody who takes a while to digest information. He talks about how he pays his own rent. He pays his bills, but he does live with his his parents. Mm -hmm. And the sister thinks that Michelle just wants someone who can be on their own and who she knows can afford to be on on his own that's fair david says that she expressed being hesitant about that Mm -hmm. he thinks that he may have come on too hard by asking too many questions maybe talking too much Mm -hmm. and they tell him that yeah just by the way you're coming across now i can see how you might be a little pushy just kind of pump the brakes Mm. you talk things flow out really fast and you might even lose her attention is what they're saying i I feel like there was a better way of saying that, uh-huh. but um, I know what they mean, though. Okay. Right? Of I, I think a lot of what David was doing was nervousness. Okay. You get what I'm saying? You ever been nervous? Well, not me, but have you ever been nervous and you just kind of got the vomit of the mouth? He's doing this whole experiment. It's new, and he just wanted to work. And sometimes when you want something to work so bad, you kind of reveal everything. Like, this is, he, she learned everything about this guy in two hours of meeting him. Yeah. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? Besides the six weeks of them being together, of him basically sharing this and this and this and basically just giving her samples of himself. But he basically like, I live with my parents. I smoke cigarettes. You get what I'm saying? Um, I'm this. I'm that. I'm this. And, and it's almost it's like, whoa. But I don't think that she is having a problem with too much information. She have a problem with one specific thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's the fact that he lives with his mother. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She keeps bringing it up, even when it's not the topic of conversation. To me, like, I hate when people say this, but I'm going to say it. I can tell why Michelle is single. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can totally see why Michelle is single. She gets hung up on stuff. Mm-hmm. She ruminates over things. She keeps bringing up the same issues. She doesn't allow the person to um, quell her doubts or to take in new information mm-hmm. so that her mindset can change. She She's a very rigid person yeah. is how it comes across. And I can see how David could be a lot for some people Mm -hmm. but i also think that in this process it's so crazy and different that i can understand why he would just want to be like hey this is me this is who i am Mm -hmm. i don't want to hold any secrets i don't want you to find anything out from anybody else like i want you to know who i am fully Mm -hmm. so that way we can really get a good start on this marriage thing of coming from an honest and real place makes sense and i think that michelle if she would have been a little less rigid and judgmental Mm -hmm. she could have seen that that was his intention Mm -hmm. and by that alone she would have been able to have a little bit more grace for him to understand okay this is a lot of information for me i'm not a person who likes to take in everything Mm -hmm. at once i'm Mm -hmm. kind of a more like spoon feed me type of person but if she can see that okay he just wants to be honest and real and wants this to be a real situation for the both of us Mm -hmm then I think that maybe she would have found some respect for him in those efforts. Maybe. But she's just, that's why I think she's a bad fit for the show. Yeah. Yeah. Let's keep going. So we've got Carla and Juan. Their families had a really good connection. And Juan's family tells Carla that he is a very happy guy. He appreciates the small things in life and he will take his time to learn new things. Mm -hmm. Carla talks about how she prayed to God for someone uh, who would play instruments to her. And he did this, just that for her. Mm -hmm. And the dad when he spoke, it was like the record screeching. Uh-huh. Dad asked, how you make your money? How? <laughs> 
yeah 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 how you making money mm-hmm. carla says uh, she's a hairstylist pilates instructor sound healer and the dad asks are you ready to help Juan? like this is going to be a 50 50 situation yeah and she says well you know we're both going to be contributing she does have a business but she would like at some point when she has children to be able to raise her children mm. carla's friends ask Juan, uh, if he wants her to work, and what are your expectations? Because they mm-hmm. already know Carla ain't for this oh, yeah. work and stuff. Oh, yeah. Juan says that he needs her to work. Need. <laughs> he did not word. mince any words. He said need. He has a startup, and they both have to contribute. He wasn't saying it in the sense of, I need her to take care of me. I need her to be able to take care of her so mm-hmm. I can take care of me, mm-hmm. and our household can be good. Yeah. He's not sold on her staying at home. No. But the dad, like I said, believes in 50-50. And Carla says, in a marriage, everything depends. Mm -hmm. We need to see what our lifestyle will be, and then we'll have a conversation about it. If I want to be a gypsy and he wants to uh, live in a mansion, that's something we need to talk about. Listen, there's a lot to say about this scene, but we're going to circle back to them once we get more information. Let's keep going, Blair. Thomas and Camille. Mm -hmm. So Thomas, uh, they're talking about how things went with the family. Thomas says everything has exceeded his expectations. Um, The sister hopes – oh, no. Sorry, this is them meeting their families. Yeah. Yeah. Everything has exceeded his expectations. And the sister hopes that Camille can be vulnerable because sometimes she has a hard time with that. Yeah. When she gets upset, she can get defensive. But she tells Thomas not to shut down and to try to work through things. Hey, listen here. It takes two to do that. Okay. And Thomas said this is a struggle for him, too. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) He's used to avoiding conflict, but he has worked on himself for about four years to where he thinks that he would be able to show up differently in those situations. Mm-hmm. He also respects marriage and isn't going to take this lightly. Okay. He, he learned a lot from his last relationships. He knows that he can't keep his thoughts to himself. Mm-hmm. Vulnerability is scary because of the fear of rejection, but that also stops the intimacy that can grow. That's true. So the dad tells Thomas that he takes this seriously and he has large expectations. He hopes that they both work on their relationship mm-hmm. and it's fulfilling for the both of them. Okay. He likes what he sees so far, but he's still watching them. Okay, listen here. So far, just off of that alone, this is already setting us up for them to be the model couple of this season, mm. in my opinion. Mm-hmm. I feel like so far, I can say they both going to say yes because they are transparent with their flaws. And it just come off that way that they have less issues than everybody else so far. It does. Yeah. When Camille meets with his family, she talks about her first impression of him and he seems to fit exactly what she needs when it comes to his core values. Yeah. She thinks that they could complement each other and their personality. He does seem a bit more reserved. Mm-hmm. And the brother says like, yeah, you'll probably have to um, push him in, in different areas. Okay. He t- talks about how Thomas likes joking, but he doesn't really like harsh criticism mm-hmm. that he may just be to himself, but approach him with care if, if he's in one of those moods. Look, he likes joking. He just don't like being the butt of the joke, mm-hmm. basically. So Camille recognizes that it's scary to be vulnerable, um, but he seems like a good person to work through that with. Okay. The bro also says that Thomas is a good listener. Thomas is meticulous about how he eats, how he eats. And Camille says, you know, honestly, I'm not worried about that. That's just Mm -hmm. something that makes him him. It really doesn't affect her. And they both like eating food one one dish at a time. Mm -hmm. So she and Tom both want children uh, because the mom said, what about grandbabies and how long? Mm -hmm. And Camille said probably within the next couple of years, she'd be Uh, down. Nice. The brother is ready for a niece or nephew. They uh, have always wanted their kids to grow up together as cousins yeah but the brother says to protect each other's heart and just don't leave each other in the dark stay open stay communicating forget that last line i'm more concerned about this line before that okay right the listen the brother's intention Mm -hmm. right if they are twins which they are right and thomas is looking up to his brother things of that nature and want to have a life with his brother yeah right when you camille you listen to what the brother's saying I have the intentions of wanting to grow my kids with his kids. Mm -hmm. So kids need to be number one. Yeah. Right. And the thing about it is that is not only a motivation uh, for Thomas, but you can kind of see the engine behind it. Mm -hmm. If his intention is I want to be like my twin brother to where like we can grow and like my nieces and nephews, we all can grow together. Camille, hopefully you can come to terms with you maybe having a baby less than two years from now. Mm -hmm. 
and that may be a lot of pressure for someone you just met but you could kind of hear what the desire of the family is through what the brother said yeah i would say overall it was a good meeting yeah, me too. between both of them and i think they got better insight into each other and each other's tics and like you said the family's intentions and what mm -hmm. they want for them as a couple and as a family so i think overall they're a bit more aware of what's going on after after this meeting makes sense now, Amim and Ikechi, so she immediately tells him, look, they said you were looking for a unicorn, mm -hmm. and I'm not that. I'm not perfect. Yeah. He says, well, who's not looking for a unicorn? He pretty much wants someone who's perfect for him. She asks for him to tell her more, um, and he says, you know, it's a unicorn. No one has ever seen it. He is just, he, he thinks he's a wordsmith, but really, he's just doing riddles. He's like, <laughs> he, a hold of me. <laughs> yeah, like, like he's just doing riddles. No one's, everybody's not looking for a unicorn. I'm not looking for a uniform. I ain't, and guess what? I ain't find a unicorn. He acts like he's the smartest in the room. Exactly. Like it's like you can't cheat. Just talk normal. Listen, like I already know you ain't smart. The minute you told me all thirty of your glasses fake, so <laughs> I, so I'm already off you off of that alone. You know. Yeah. So and Mem says that she is not perfect, and mm -hmm. Ikechi says it's more like Lego pieces. He's just looking for someone to where they fit together. Okay. He's not looking for perfection because it is impossible. But he says that he's not everyone's cup of tea, but he's somebody's crown royal on ice. And okay. I'm just like, was that written in your book of love letters to your imaginary wife? Yeah, <laughs> like, it was. I'm just like, oh. Okay. Anyway, M.M. is hoping that he sees attributes in her that says that she is his wife because technically she is his wife. He won't. He talks about how he can see success with her. He's lying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, he, the fact that he is looking for a unicorn, this is something that the family said. Yeah. So he, so you will never measure up. And that book of love him. letters told me that from the beginning. Right. I was just like, yeah. he doesn't want a real person. No, like, like, mm -hmm. so, and you would never measure up to his expectation. He will always be in a position to criticize and to basically tear you down because he's looking for a unicorn while you are fine with a pony. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's it just, it just not fair. The balance is, the scale is already tipping against you yeah. <laughs> you get what i'm saying let's keep going next we have michelle and david yeah david says that her family said that he needs to slow down the pace oh. and michelle confirms that she does take a while to process mm -hmm. he plans to take things day by day from now and give her more time she asks if he had a meltdown at any point yet mm. and he said that he did when he was um working out just you know that previous morning and just wondering how things are going to work and yeah. you know how he's going to get to know her but also not make things feel so pressured she talks about the meltdown she had at the wedding mm -hmm. he asks her if she still wants to do the honeymoon and she says yes mm. she asks are you embarrassed to live at home or to tell people that wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> where that come from but okay <laughs> keep He's, going he says i mean he stands by his decision, but he doesn't like that there's this perception of him being a mama's boy. Yeah. But he doesn't want her to feel too concerned about that. Too late. She is concerned. Mm -hmm. David reiterates he chose to live home to save money. Mm -hmm. He does pay his parents rent. He knows it's time to leave the nest, but he wants to give her security that he knows that he needs to get out. Yeah. Michelle says that she is really hung up on that and it is a major thing when it comes to her. Yeah. She sees all the smile, kind things that he does for her. It's on her now on how she wants to deal with that piece of information. Like Blair said, Blair said she could see why Michelle is single. She was the one that said she wanted a light skinned black man, number one, kind of weird. And then she was the one that said, Hey, I don't need a husband. Mm -hmm. Then then why go to extreme lengths to get one? Exactly. Come on now. Mm -hmm. Like, so, like, that makes no sense. So, she's the one that's over here that got to tell about, like, I don't like men in flip flops. I don't like men to do this. I had a breakdown. I was crying. I cried 10 times on my wedding. Like, Michelle, you are really a blaring red flag more than he is. Now, David, you can word it a little differently. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You don't have to say, I live with my mama. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? You, you can word it to where it can be more um, so people can digest it better. But I think the fact that you're younger than her and you live with your mother is just, it's, it's already three red stripes for you when it comes to Michelle. And you wear a side ponytail. It right? doesn't help. And it, 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 it just comes off as she just got a stick up her butt. Yeah. To be honest, because we wasn't even talking about that. I'm over here trying to cater to your emotions, talking about, hey, do you still want to go on the honeymoon? She's like, yeah, of course. Like, I, that's the least thing that I can get on this trip yeah. is a honeymoon. I, I'm probably not going to marry you, but I, I'm going to get this honeymoon. <laughs> Let's keep going. Yeah. Uh, only thing I want to say about go that ahead. is even though David, 
may come across a little immature in different mm-hmm. ways. If someone, the fact, how do I say it? <laughs> I think that he's a nice enough guy and uh, a guy who communicates well enough to mm-hmm. where if somebody could see that it is his choice and he's willing to yeah. make a different choice in order to be a husband and to have their own household. Mm-hmm. I think that someone could have a really happy marriage with David, but Michelle, she cannot see past that. No, she can't. And, and mm-hmm. I think she has to see the, she have to see his place. Yeah. Like it may be bigger than her spot. If he got a kitchenette and all that stuff downstairs, like he, she has to see it because just hearing it, you already build an image in your head. And just like, she's no longer interested in getting to know him as yeah. a person. Yeah. It's just like, it's all wrapped around your mama's house. That's true we move back to Madison and Alan Mm -hmm. Madison's dad brought up the STD thing Mm -hmm. Uh, his friend said that he was a dreamer she wants to make sure that they're on the same page as far as getting to know each other and that they're going to have to talk through things even though they're still husband and wife yeah to me that means that Madison's kind of like trying to pump the brakes a little bit Mm -hmm. Alan asked physically is he outside of her comfort zone is the attraction there yeah and Madison tells him that he's not her type um, but it's different but not in a bad way okay and then he asked her, like, what is a pretty boy? What is a pretty boy? Madison says, just overly groomed, kind of metrosexual guy who stays in the gym. Um, and he figured that he kind of was a pretty boy. Um, no. But they still have a lot to learn about each You're other. You're not a pretty boy. It's okay. He was like, I'm kind of clean cut. Well, no, like, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's the face. Yeah. It's the face. So... They'll be heading to Mexico for their honeymoon. Yeah. Camille shows Thomas a little sexy red bra that she's packing that he might get to see. And she says that it might make an appearance on the honeymoon. He shows his plaid underwear that mm-hmm. might get, make his appearance as well. Mm-hmm. So Ikechi is hoping for some balcony action. Stop when it comes right to there. M&M. Stop right there. Stop right there. Right. Because he always want to be seen. No, because he tried. <laughs> he tried to cover it up to basically like so we can see the sunset so we can see the view. But that's not what he meant with balcony action. Listen here. We know what balcony action is. Mm-hmm. OK. OK. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so like I knew exactly what he meant by mm-hmm. that. You get what I'm saying? He's basically for for him. He's Denzel Washington in that meme. I'm leaving here with something. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So we knew what he meant when he said balcony action. So the couples gather on the bus to head to the airport. Yeah. Michelle doesn't get how everyone is so at ease with their spouses. Yeah, because she's she's freaking out. She's like about two seats away Mm -hmm. from David. Mm -hmm. Uh, So they get to their resort in Cancun. Most of the couples talk about how they've had chemistry and have got along quickly. Yeah. Thomas is feeling safe around Camille, even though he struggles with vulnerability. Mm -hmm. He is ready for some more one on one time with her, though. Like. When can we leave this group yeah. session? <laughs> Listen, I saw y'all packing the condoms inside the bag. I saw y'all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ikechi is looking for some one-on-one time too, and him and Mem are just like leg on each other, arm on each yeah. other. They just like wrapped around each other, super tight. I feel bad for her because he go suck the beauty out of her boy. Mm. Madison has been single for three three years, never lived with a guy. Mm-hmm. This is a lot of time to spend together, and she knows that she cannot be her normal single self. It's just a lot for okay. her. Okay. Alan is shocked to hear that um, because he didn't know that she was having any anxiety surrounding the marriage. (laughs) What do you mean? (laughs) Alan wants to see if the chemistry that they had at the wedding and the wedding night like exists beyond that. Mm-hmm. David knows that he needs to be more considerate and compromise. He knows that he overwhelmed her with a lot of the information. And mm-hmm. Michelle's just like, yeah, I'm overwhelmed. Um, it's different from picturing things to actually experiencing it. Okay. And Madison says, well, that's normal. It doesn't need to be a fantasy of, oh, we were meant to be together. Well, everybody accept you catchy and MM. Mm-hmm. And apparently everyone thinks their chemistry is just radiating. Listen, don't fall for it. This is his, this is his, he's, this is what you call performative he's on stage right now exactly (laughs) right like he never called her baby or sweetheart any of those pet names in private Mm. but once we get in front of people now there's a lot of babies a lot of touching a lot of leg on leg arm on arm he's performing right now so juan is open to pretty much anything Mm -hmm. he wants to respect her and work on himself and his weaknesses yeah he is more business she's more spiritual but there's not a right or wrong way to do this Mm, okay he tells everyone we need to focus on having a great time and the thing is it catch you in a mem they might not always be like this and they're like whoa and he's just like i'm just saying everybody's gonna have their moments do you know what's funny because mm-hmm. he let's see he sees it he sees through it <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> we see it carla is wondering if there is enough for her uh to stay interested in juan and for them to continue on so that's crazy to put the interest on him 
Mm-hmm. Not you doing your part. Basically, like, are you going to be enough for me to even like you? Yeah. Let's keep going. So it is day three of marriage. Mm-hmm. David's phone went off again at 445. And he says he's really going to shut his, al- his alarms off this yeah. time. He slept on the couch last night. Apparently, he ordered some tacos to the room. Mm-hmm. And he knocked out. Michelle finds it concerning that they're not in a space to where they want to sleep in the same bed together. Mm-hmm. And then he talks about how, you know, he does eat a lot. He used to compete in physique fitness competitions when he was in his 20s. But he's not looking to do that again since he has, you know, two jobs and a marriage. And she says, like, oh, you're putting me in there, lumping me up as far as, like, another job. He's like, no, not necessarily. And then Michelle, out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. (laughs) Says, who would want to live with their parents at 37? Wait a minute. She wants someone who is independent, and he is not giving independent. She's telling him this. Yes. Right? Yeah, mincing no words. Yeah. He thought they were moving forward, but apparently she's stuck. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to overwhelm her, so he's just thrown back. Okay. Now, here's the thing about it, right? (coughs) As Blair is, listen here, make sure y'all put your uh, uh, hearts and stuff for Blair trucking through, right? This, here's the thing about it, right? The reason why he didn't feel comfortable to be in the bed, because she's radiating that she don't want to be with him, mm-hmm. right? So the whole idea of she's like, oh, I wonder why, like, we can't get to that part of we can't be in the bed together. Because you are contributing to that. We can't have a normal conversation without you low key and salt to me saying who would want to live in the in, in, with their parents at 37. Like, don't you want to be independent? That's why I'm like, I can't wait to see her spot and things of that nature, because at the end of the day, like. It's hard to it's hard to support David because he do live with his mama, but she's making it easy. Yeah, she's making it very easy because at least you didn't. Now I'm almost to the point where David next time lie. Just next time, whoever else come on the show, don't don't even say you live with your mama. Because at this point, he should have just worded it like, hey, look, I used to live on myself. I, I mean, I used to live by myself. I sold the spot and like I've been living with my parents. But once I get married, once I have a serious relationship, I'm moving out. But I feel like he already said that. I feel like he said that in so many other ways. And she just keep not even she's not on the point of talking about him living with his parents anymore. Now she's getting personal. Now it's attacking him. Now it's no longer, oh, you live with your parents because she already knows that. Now it's like, who will want to live with their parents? <laughs> like you're 30- a weirdo. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Blair. Next, we've got Ikechi and MM. Uh-huh. They talk about food and how he doesn't like chitlin. She does. Apparently, he doesn't eat meat. Yeah. He tells her that he doesn't have a lot of pet peeves, but ignorance is high on his list mm-hmm. and not wanting to know more than you already do. That goes back to Blair point where he feels like he's the smartest one in the room. Mm-hmm. Keep going. She was engaged a couple of years ago. Uh, there was infidelity and things just didn't work out. Yeah. And he talks about in his situation, there was infidelity and mistrust on his part, mm-hmm. but he wouldn't want to do anyone wrong like that again she does think people can grow um and he probably isn't the same guy that he was 12 years ago yeah and they get into the pool they're super hugged up all that stuff performative for the camera Mm -hmm. performative for the camera keep going madison and alan have dinner yeah madison apologizes for being weird she's just been feeling pretty anxious Mm -hmm. and he asks her like is there something that triggered it did i say something did someone say something did someone do something yeah and madison says that the wedding was great they had chemistry being by herself and thinking about the gravity of the situation is just kind of what made her change in her way of thinking yeah she wants excitement and romance in her marriage and alan tells her that he will take her on a magic carpet ride okay he thinks they have a great recipe for success that they complement each other well yeah he doesn't want to give her anxiety he is fearful to even hold her hand because he doesn't want to make her uncomfortable Mm -hmm. he asks if there's anything he can do even if it is giving her some space Madison says, well, we can touch. I don't want you walking around on eggshells. And she's not trying to push him away. He felt that it was a good conversation and they gained some clarity after it of just knowing where they stand and where they, you know, have uh, places to grow. It's kind of hard for me not to be uncomfortable and for me to not walk on eggshells when all I've been hearing is how much I am not your type. Yeah. Right. If that's the case, don't bring up types. Mm -hmm. We signed up for the show. What did you think overall about this episode, Blair? Overall, I thought it was pretty decent. Mm -hmm. I think that most people are getting to know each other a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, And then there's Michelle, who's not interested in getting to know David. (laughs) Not at all. (laughs) But I'm just, I feel like we're slowly like pacing, you Mm -hmm. know, to to get to like the meat and potatoes of the show. And I think they're doing a good job building on it. Listen here, Mm -hmm. 100%. Make sure y'all, when I upload this, wait a couple hours. 
We also review the after party. So much more information that we are going to share on this show based on what we see on the after party. It was a good one. Oh, yeah. No, it definitely mm-hmm. was. They brought up two separate casts for it. Um, and we will see y'all in a couple hours after this upload. Y'all be good. Bye.